Friday, I want to, to give out a little bit of pointing out instruction as to how to view these difficult times, how to get through them, and also the time where The first thing I would like to mention brains and our minds out of such a subjective posture. Because we pick our minds up and our brains it's not a You know, how how do we get through this time? How um no, people that present themselves now. Actually, before I even go into that, I want to leave you with that. to avoid, and we didn't. We looked for Ebb coming out are as false as the ones that came out of Burba, uh, Burma, you know, and then we found out so many, and in such horrible ways. Well, the same thing is happening in Tibet, again. Lamas are being killed, lay people are rioting to stick up for the lamas for the first time. Monks and nuns, it used to be apparently the nuns were the ones that mainly protested, uh, maybe they felt a little safer being women. Maybe they were more pissed off. Or maybe they're brave gals like us. <laughs> <laughs> For whatever reason, they have been willing to protest. But now it's, it's amped up, and um, the Chinese are really cracking down. I saw pictures of the same kinds of tanks and firearms that they had in Tiananmen Square. Uh, it's, it's coming. It's going to be bad. It's already bad. And then, of course, the same uh, difficulty is happening in Burma. And there's really been no let up there, even though the news isn't covered as well. <clears throat> I'd have to say, these are probably, I'm, I'd have to say with some certainty, that these are the times that Guru Rinpoche predicted. We've always asked ourselves, how can it become that dark? The Dharma cannot function. Now we're beginning to see how it can become that dark. Um, I know of nothing altruistic, reasonable, um, helpful, wholesome, or kind about the Chinese government. I don't, you know, if there's something kind and wonderful about the Chinese government, I'd love to hear from you, because um, I've never seen anything. I've only, I've only seen cruelty and repression, and the history of what the Tibetans alone have suffered is enough to make me think that um, we are dealing with a cruel and unjust government uh, in, in the nation of China, the Chinese Republic or whatever it is. Uh, I don't think it's the Chinese people. I think it's the Chinese government. Um, 
many people that have come here to America have actually engaged in Tibetan Buddhism, and they are Chinese nationals. But they have some faith, and they understand uh, that the lamas are the real thing and that Tibetan Buddhism is the real thing. But now, because of the, their stance of wanting more freedom and wishing to practice as they should be allowed to practice, their requests are being met with terrible and brutal force. And it's being used as an excuse to just wipe them out. Tibetans are a real pain in the neck for the Chinese. Um, they've been trying to inbreed with them, sterilize with them, sterilize them so that they can't have children, and all kinds of really horrific tales have come out of Tibet. Now that the Tibetan people are unrise, uprising, and I support them, they have a right to defend their faith. We have a right to stand up against the darkness. His Holiness the Dalai Lama defends their right to protest and to stand up. And so my measly two cents is that I couldn't agree with that more. Somebody's got to do it. And unfortunately, the nations that are the strongest and the supposedly the fairest are not standing up at all because they have only their self-interests invo involved. And so there really is nobody to stick up for the Tibetan people besides the Tibetans. Likewise, the Burmese uh, Sangha. Uh, really, no one has stood up for them other than their own selves. And uh, their neighboring um, countries that have taken some few of them in. But to stand up for Burma, that has not happened. No country has stood up and said, you know, we won't allow this to happen. So my feeling that in this day and time, selfishness, darkness, um, unwholesome actions, brutality, force, just darkness in general, the hit of darkness that has been coming and is coming and has arrived during this time of Kali Yuga, I would say that for the time being it seems to have the upper hand. Now we know that this, is pre this has been predicted and we know that there are many teachings and many indications that for as long as we can hold out as Dharma protect pra practitioners, we are charged with defending our faith. Our faith is not a cult. It is one of the oldest faiths in the world. Um, it at one time was the largest faith in the world, although I think something, I think Hinduism's caught up, or maybe, maybe it's uh, Muslim, Islam has caught up. But at one time was the largest faith in the world. And we have ourselves as Tibetan Buddhists seen the sad and terrible passing of so many of the great lamas that were bulwarks for us, that held the line. They were like, I mean, how to describe giants, you know, um, in their authority, in their wisdom, in their clarity. These giants were looked up to universally by just everybody that considered themselves anywhere near Buddhism. And now there are so few left. And so again, that's another sign of the dark times. The great lamas leave and they don't come back as quickly. The causes and conditions aren't there. 
So one of the things that we must consider ourselves charged with is to keep the bodhisattva ideal alive at this most difficult time when there is nothing but resistance to altruism. I mean, even this country that was a country that gave and gave and gave in the past, took care of its own people and then ventured out to take care of the rest of the world, that altruism is gone. Even for people in this country, this, con this government doesn't mind much whether we lose our houses or every effort that we've made to live a wholesome life goes down the drain. Nobody seems to have the moral guts to keep jobs in this country. I mean, I don't want to turn into Lou Dobbs here, but you know, <laughs> everything's overseas. It's all in India. It's all in some other country. And why? Because it's cheaper, the labor is cheaper, and nobody, nobody, nobody except for a screaming few is looking to see what's happening to us. That we feel free and to go out and start a war rather than to nurture the causes of war, which are poverty and ignorance, is an indication to me that stupid has begun and wisdom has retreated. So my feeling is um, we can't let ourselves be in that stage where we take everything such so personally. We can't be saying, oh no, oh no, this is happening to me. Or, oh no, this is happening to her, or us, even. I don't think that's the right attitude, because I don't think it's just happening to us. I think darkness is bolder. It's making itself better known. And good people like us, who were never known for our street fighting ways anyway, unless we came from Brooklyn, <laughs> Good people like us tend to back into a corner and just shiver. Because we don't want to cross against the light. You know, and we don't want to, we just, we don't have a criminal record and we don't want one. People who are actually criminals don't have that much to lose. We feel, and rightly so, that we have our purity. The way to defend purity is not by not acting. The way to defend purity is not, what, not by sitting in a corner weeping or looking ever skyward for hope while our brothers and sisters are being annihilated. That is not a way to maintain purity. That is a way to isolate oneself and simply not help. My feeling is that purity is, is in one's intention. If we see harm coming to Vajra brothers and sisters, we should not hesitate to stand in a line, surround them, and protect them. If we are attacked in a false way, in an unwholesome way, in a criminal way, we should see no problem in standing up in force and protecting ourselves. The only thing that keeps us in the little corner crying and looking skyward is that mean touch of laziness that we all have. We just don't want to rock the boat. We like it when things remain the same. You know, I wish I could tell you that that was a solution. If, you, if we all sit in the corner, we'll all sit in the corner for a little while, but things will not remain the same. They will continue to change and to decay. And so it's necessary to take action. 
when we look at people, like I think about the Chinese now, uh, when I see them with those tremendous uh, weapons pointed at monks and nuns, monks and nuns, wearing the robes of the Buddha, my heart breaks for the monks and nuns, of course, but my heart breaks for the Chinese. What causes are they in the middle of creating now? And how will the Chinese people have to suffer because of the, cause, the causes created by the government which affects the entire group karma of the nation? So here the enemies of Dharma and our own included are in the causal phase of karma. They are bringing about causes now that will make them suffer in the future. No doubt about it. As for the intruder that has tried to harm us, I mean, a friend of mine made a, a good analogy. He said, basically, what can he do besides piddle on the carpet of your mind? <laughs> I mean, you're the good guys. I mean, we're stupid. We don't know how to do the legal stuff, but we're not evil and we're not criminals. So as we get our own legal whatever's fixed up, which I don't have a clue about, um, then we're in a stronger state than we were before. So in essence, a favor has been done to us. And we remind ourselves how important the Buddha Dharma is in our life. And we remind ourselves of the truth of our lineage. And we remind ourselves also gratefully, and I hope it causes us to pray and pray and pray, that one of the last of these great living Buddhas who are the, the holders of the way is still alive. And he is our throne holder. We can be grateful for so much. Good people um, examine themselves a lot. I've taught us to do it. And that's where we clarify our intention. But as I've also taught, self-examination should never blow over into the deeply neurotic or the, the, where it paralyzes one against taking any action. So self-examination tells us that we've been neglectful and so that's opened the door. We got blindsided and so that means we have to examine our own internal hooks. All of us. Me too. I'm doing it. You should do it. But not to the degree where you feel that you have no right to take action or to go forward. That's when you pass into neuroses. That's not helpful whatsoever. To examine oneself internally has mostly to do with motivation and one's activity on the path. The questions we should be acting or asking ourselves is, why are we Buddhist? Why do we practice? Why do we hold these robes? And those answers should enable us to go deeper and to practice better. But when we ask ourselves, what did I do wrong? It's not as helpful. <clears throat> right now, we tend to get a little subjective. We're all really nervous. Um, sometimes, even in a close family, that makes us choke each other. <laughs> you know, I'm so nervous, I'd like to choke my neighbors. I woke up like that today, a peaceful Buddhist. I thought, give me a neighbor to choke. <laughs> And of course, that was just a thought. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't choked anyone yet. 
But the stress makes us feel weird, you know. But this is the time to rely on our deepest and best, purest intention and most wholesome qualities. That's what you have to rely on. To rely on your own, you know, judgment of the situation with what facts you have or whatever. You know, everybody has to think things through, so yes, but the most important thing is to make sure that our motivation is pure. What I see is, in our case, two people causing themselves a great deal of suffering. Um, I don't want to be either one of those people when they die. They will not receive help. In fact, to betray and break some Maya towards the three precious jewels as they have done is like, you know, the trap door goes out and boom, you're in Vajra hell. There's no court. There's no court date. It's pretty automatic. And I've seen that happen, and it happens. And, uh, and even when a person floats away from the path, if there is some willingness in them to come back and to be remorseful for their activities, then there's some hope. But if, as in this case, there is no willingness at all, there is nothing but vengefulness and hatred and really dark, dark, dark emotions, then, then there's no hope. There's no hope for these people. At least not now and not for a very long time. Of course, we can comfort ourselves knowing that the Buddha seed is within them too. But the causes and connections that they are creating now must be stopped for their own sake as well as for ours. <clears throat> I feel that way about the Chinese government. That much non-virtue, what's going to happen when the, Chinese when the Chinese government starts really reaping what they've sown? What's going to happen to the Chinese people and will they become more warlike? Will they take it out on the rest of the world? These are the real questions, not what am I doing wrong and shouldn't I go hide in a corner? It's more about look what's happening to the Buddha Dharma. From what I understand, <clears throat> we are, in a sense, between waves of Dharma in this country. The first waves, wave was the first lamas that came, Dujya Rinpoche, Jauta Rinpoche. Uh, I, don't, I don't really have all the names, but the first wave, these lamas came. And then secondarily, more lamas came. But then a lot of those lamas have gotten too old to teach or have died, have had their, their uh, parinirvana. Now there is a lack, in a sense. There are not that many older, really seasoned, really experienced lamas here in the West. There are a lot of the younger ones, and many of the younger ones do lose their way. They become affected by Western culture. So if we look past our own little sandbox here, we can see that this is a very difficult time for Dharma. The new lamas that are coming up now, these are inc incarnations that died somewhere back and are now approaching their 20s. There's a lot of them around, and they seem to have very new ideas. Some of them are making movies. Some of them are making music. I'm not in my 20s. I'm not including my that, myself in that. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are doing really very different, um, interesting things to reach out, to connect with more modern minds in more modern ways. But there's a little bit of lag in the time. Because these lamas are not yet seasoned. 
They're not yet experienced. They have the book learning, many of them. But they don't have the lifetime of experience that is so valuable when a bodhisattva begins to age. I've heard it said time and time and time again. The most valuable lamas are the, the lamas that are getting on. Because they've survived. They've been through so much. They know. They have experience. They know what the West is like. They know what the East is like. They're seasoned. And fully flowered. Not, not, not like a young lama who is waiting to fully open. But they are fully flowered. I think that's how the darkness is getting a hold. I think that that's how it's working. They're, they've pretty much either killed or run out the great lamas in Tibet, although there are a handful still left. So we're in between waves. We have lamas maturing and we have lamas that have left. So where does that put us? Should we change religions? I don't think so. <clears throat> I think where that puts us is in a position where we need to give rise to Vajra confidence. And we need to hold the line as best as we can by being solid practitioners and not being afraid to speak up to defend the Dharma, to defend one's Sangha, or to, to defend one's temple or monastery. The, the monks and nuns that are standing up in Tibet, I join them. I join them in body, speech, and mind. The monks and nuns that are being destroyed in Burma, I join them as well. In body, speech, and mind. They have seen in their wisdom that it is time we cannot be pushed any further. And I see as well. I agree with that. It is time and we cannot be pushed any further. So, regarding uh, um, the intruders that are trying to take us down now, uh, they have my complete compassion. And even when I woke up this morning feeling like I wanted to beat somebody up, <laughs> I didn't feel that about them. I feel terrible sorry. But not sorry enough that I won't stand up and fight for the Dharma. Not that sorry. In fact, if they have to suffer some of the consequences of what they're doing right now, then that's less consequence to suffer after the time of their death. I feel that for many of us, we are unused to this kind of thing. We're not criminal types. We're not beings that are just loaded with hair triggers of rage. I mean, we may have our moments, but we're not like that. And so it's, it's really hard for us to understand how to respond. The one thing we want to do is be sure that we never become them. And that means that when we defend the Dharma, we do so for the for the utmost pure reasons because dharma benefits sentient beings crime doesn't we defend the dharma because it is the teachings of the buddha and that was the living buddha who left us the way we defend the dharma because we are sons and daughters of none other than guru rinpoche himself 
and he brought the Dharma to Tibet. He said this time was coming. He warned against us and admonished us to stay pure and to stay strong. So I feel that as some of the older Sangha, and I don't mean older in terms of gray hairs, I mean been with me the longest, the ones that I can really talk to, you know, let's understand that we are not only allowed to take action, we are charged with it. One doesn't... uh, there, There are so many strange ideas about good behavior and and saintliness and um, that somehow, you know, if if bad times come around, we should nail nail our own selves to the cross, you know, and just hang there for a while. (laughs) Oh, yeah, wheel instead of cross. (laughs) But that's not, that's not what we believe in. I mean, that does no good. There's no benefit to that. The real benefit is in going the method of Tantra, which is that this darkness, that whatever's being flung at us, should make us gear up. You know, pull ourselves together. Never be caught a day without doing your protectors. Never. Never allow your practice to lapse. Do not ever allow the confusion brought about by this kind of non-virtue to shake you. I mean, why should it shake you when we've been taught and we know over and over and over again that the strongest and only real activity in phenomenal existence is the bodhicitta. It is the first rise or display from the absolute state of emptiness, and it is the only true display. As if that display were light, and what we're seeing is the refraction of light in different weird combinations but it's still the light. So, since the bodhicitta is the only true display, by that measure, it is the only strong display. We will see non-virtue, we will see brutality. And if we fight it with more non-virtue and more brutality, we will lose. But it is time now for us to take up our weapons. And these weapons are the bodhicitta, good intention, and virtue. That's what we fight with. We've seen from our own experience why the Vinaya was written. Now we know. Now we know. Why is it that, you know, nuns should not mix with lay people in a personal way? Now we know why. We learned. So I'm grateful for that lesson. I'm sorry that it cost so much. What else have we learned? Well, so far we're learning that nobody can kick our ass. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to get too uh, rambunctious here, but... uh. (laughs) (laughs) So... I, I guess Trace Anis and Alana can probably tell you, if the rest of you haven't heard, that since this has happened, they've been calling me the sledgehammer. <laughs> 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 
And it's because I've really, I've, um, every time I see something, I just take, you know, do this, do this, do this, do this. And I haven't let it slack at all. And I'm not going to let it slack. And it's not because I feel like we're in trouble or our name will be blasphemed. How's Payul going to be blasphemed? You know, that's not going to happen. As for myself, screw it. When the Blues album comes out, I'm in trouble anyway. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm fine. But we have a job to do. We really have to pay attention to this. And we have to learn, particularly the ordained need to learn, how important it is to follow these rules and not get sloppy. And how suspect it is when somebody that represents themselves as Dharma tries to help you break these rules. You know? So, Oddly enough, what's happening out of all of this is that um, I've examined myself and I realize that I let this person in because I couldn't see around me anybody that was standing up and saying, I will. I'll do it. Nobody was really standing up. Everybody was passing the buck. You know that. We don't have to talk about this. We all know this. And so... Even though my spidey sense told me something was terribly wrong here, I'll confess to having let this man in because I didn't have anybody else to help. And I shouldn't have believed the lies that he told me, but and I didn't quite, but some of them, there, were, there was truth mixed in. That's the way of a con man. Truth mixed in. Well, what has happened since then is that I'm finding out we are awful goddamn strong. Excuse my language. Ooh. You, can ble- you can bleep that out if you... <laughs> we are awful bleep bleep strong. Um, I'm discovering that we have some really solid, strong, talented people in the Sangha. I'm discovering that I myself am solid, strong, and talented. (laughs) And the message from His Holiness, which says, you don't need anybody. You can do it yourselves, and you should do it yourselves, has really gotten through to me, finally. I mean, I don't know how many times he's said this to me. He said that rely on yourself, you know what to do, just do it. You've done pretty well so far. So I guess I'll just take that as gospel. Sounds like gospel to me. <clears throat> but for, the, for some of us who feel like we really don't understand where's that line where you're a good Buddhist, peaceful, do no harm, yada yada. When you cross the line into a bad Buddhist, now you want to go hire a lawyer. <laughs> you want to you take it back and all of that. I would say there is no line except one's intention. Now, if you want to take the invader down as uh, a payback, wrong attitude, and it's not going to work. I don't want to pay him back. He's going to get paid back. I don't want to be there when it happens. Um, if anything, I, 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 I hate and regret to see anyone heading, particularly someone I know, to that kind of suffering. So I don't, I don't really want to get involved in that. That's not what I'm after. I'm after wholesome. I'm after 
knowing that this guy does this to other Dharma centers and that he's got a lot of information on a lot of centers and that he uses Dharma as a way to get money that's where my intention is that's going to stop and it's going to stop on my watch so if Dharma is going through some difficult times and I know this to be true not only in America but in other parts of the world we are required more than ever to be stronger than we ever have been to stand up and unite we have no business squabbling with each other we have no business you know pissing on turf trying to get ourselves where I have this bit and you have that bit and we have that bit we have no business acting like that. Now is the time to bring forth and give rise to our best qualities. The what can I do quality. How can I help? You want to volunteer? I'll raise both hands. You know, that's the kind of thing we need. Is real. We need to get the, get the guts going. But the guts always have to be tempered by proper intention. We don't intend harm. We don't mean any meanness. But we will stop harm from coming to Dharma. If we can take this intruder out and prevent him from scamming other centers, as he has done and, continue, and plans on continuing to do, then I will think that would have been a great virtue. And I will be very proud of that work. And just think of the money we can make for the movie. <laughs> but that's, that's really how I feel about it. I feel, I feel um, empowered by this. I feel, like I, I feel like, no, this will not happen. No, it will not. I feel that whatever I can do to get busy holding back the darkness, that is what I will do. And not just in theory, but in fact. It is not a virtue to roll over and pay de play dead when someone is sticking a sword in your heart. We're not fighters, and so when we stand up and fight, that display is magnificent. When we act like a true Dharma family and, and, you know, stick together where no one can winnow us apart, that's, 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 that's miraculous. That's amazing. That's an indication of good qualities. I don't hate this man and I don't hate his girlfriend either. I just feel real, real bad they let themselves get into this condition. But not nearly bad enough where I'm going to stop protecting us. In fact, the sorrier I feel for them, the harder I'm going to work at it. You know? So... As for me, I feel like Dharma is my faith. It's always been my faith. Um, lifetime after lifetime, I feel like I've watched Dharma rise up and I've watched it lose ground. And I know that these things are cyclic. My strongest feeling is that no way will I allow Dharma to fall to its knees without offering my life, my strength, my capabilities, and everything that I have to bolster it up. If we remember that the heart of Dharma is the bodhicitta, then we will not fail. 
Just simply remember that. Again, we're asking ourselves, how could this happen to us? Why not? Happens to everybody. Why are we different? It happens to everybody. From what I hear, it happened to His Holiness the Dalai Lama, that he actually had a, a faker in his midst, and he didn't spot it for a long time, and it really messed, messed up his organization for a while. Um, I hear that other lamas have had like demons amongst them who worked to take them in, down and in many ways succeeded temporarily. But it never really worked. Because a real lama will protect, defend, and fight with compassion. So none of these losers have ever really done that much harm. They just created for themselves a world of suffering. And so I'm telling you all, I admonish you to stay firm. I'm telling you to stay as correct in your heart and your motivation. I mean, check it all the time. But don't let it fall, you know, don't let it break you down. Don't get paralyzed. Don't fall. Remain upright. What fights you is not stronger than you. Because you have the robes, the method, and the blessing of the Buddha Dharma. And the darkness does not. So we have to get smart. We have to get a little savvy. We have to take a deep breath. Say, all right, I'll defend the Dharma with my life if I have to. Always legally, always correctly, and always with compassion. But stand up we must because if those monks and nuns in Tibet are willing to be shot dead, then we should be willing to stand up by their sides. If the monks and nuns of Burma are willing to stand up and fight, we should fight along with them. The attack of Dharma is happening all over the world. And so we've all got to take care, take care of our business, and make sure that we do all we can to benefit sentient beings. And one of the things that, you know, we should do is to make sure that we don't give up on our dreams. We have so many important dreams. And, and in a way, we're thinking, oh, maybe we can't do that now because we're in trouble. No, we're not in trouble. <laughs> we still want to have a hospice. We still want to rescue beings in trouble. Human beings through... Uh, through Buddhist assistance and animal beings through Tara's babies. We should never give up, up on our dreams. Those are the things that make us powerful. When we defend our dreams, we become empowered. And we are become stronger, more focused. Are our dreams good? Are we looking to rip off anybody? No. We're looking to save lives. Try to remember that. Are we looking to gossip about anybody? No. We're trying to rescue lives, save people. Are we looking to do something that's outrageous? No, we're looking to do something that's legal so that this, you know, negative attack stops and we can get on with the business of compassion. Because our business is compassion. And, um, you know, I also have it in my mind that if this becomes a story, and that's fine with me. You know why? Because the story will be that you can't take down the Buddha Dharma. You just can't. It's not allowed.
So, whatever. We'll just sally forth and we'll just keep going and we'll clean it up and we'll be fine. And we won't lose our hearts. And we won't lose our dreams. We'll figure out how to make it work because we are on the right side. The intruder is intent on harm. We are intent on benefit. Please remember that about yourselves. So that you're not paralyzed and you can move forward. And gird yourself and take up your armor, your Vajra armor. I think we should all inform the Olympic Committee that we are not happy that the Olympics are being held in a country that kills monks and nuns. And I think we should uh, keep on doing what we can to influence the uh, government of Burma. It's a little closer to home, I have to say, in Laza. But equality is part of bodhicitta. And... I hate to see this suffering happen, happening anywhere it happens. Now fight equally and stand equally with either one of those sanghas. And when it comes to defending Dharma in America, remember, there's no one to pass this off on. You see? The old wise ones are for the most part passed. Their new incarnations are for the most part growing. Coming up but not quite ripe. Not all, but not quite ripe. And in America, there's us. <laughs> so I think it's a not only something that behooves us to do, I think it's an absolute sin of omission if we don't clean this up. Because other Dharma centers will get hit after us and have been before us. And no one who is a criminal with a rap sheet as long as your arm should represent themselves as a tuku and collect money on that, based on that. And if we have to do something to stop it, we'll do it legal and we'll do it right, but we'll do it. So, that's it. I guess it woke up the street fighter in me. I thought that was, you know. <laughs> kid from Brooklyn. So, this is not a happy thing. Um, it's no, it doesn't make me feel happy uh, that we're going to win this fight. It doesn't make me feel happy that we have to do this. Uh, but it makes me feel calm, poised, and determined. Because it must be done. So, if it's been put in our lap, I think it has to be for a reason. I really do. So I think it's up to us. And so any of you that can help in any way, shape, manner, or form, we would love for you to help. And the main thing is to keep the business of KPC going. We want to be totally righteous in every way, shape, manner, or form. And that should never change. We should always hope and want that. And we should always create that. And to keep the business of, going, of, of, uh, of uh, Dharma going, we'll continue to have teachings. Um, you know, I'm, I'm planning to start podcasting. I don't know what that is, but I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm going to have people with cameras come to my home and um, podcast from my home. <laughs> right in front of um, that beautiful altar that um, Muksan Rinpoche gave to me I thought that would be just the best place so we'll be alright 
just keep yourselves together. Don't get flaky. This is not the time to get flaky. Keep your practice strong. Always do your protectors. Do them with fate and might, with Vajra determination. And, um, and we continue. We continue in this, I hate to use the word, but battle. But remember that we are fighting, not with weapons, but with bodhicitta and with virtue. It's not to say we don't want to punch him in the head. <laughs> it's okay to want to punch him in the head. But, but we're not going to do it. <laughs> and that's the difference. We don't commit crimes. We have to stay focused, we have to stay together, and we have to bring this darkness down. That's what's going to happen. And hopefully, um, our brothers in Tibet will be able to hold against that darkness. Brothers and sisters, and our brothers and sisters in Burma will be able to hold against that darkness. And uh, I dedicate all of my merit in the three times, past, present, and future, every single morsel that sentient beings of all kinds and all types in this planet and all planets will be able to practice Dharma purely and cleanly without interference. This I dedicate all of my virtue to. Whatever I have done, whatever I will do, may the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas look and see what storehouse there is there in the entire Pyle tradition and not only my own small virtues and apply that to the alleviation of the suffering of Buddhists around the world. And that's my sincere hope, my sincere prayer. I pray it every day and I hope you will too. I hope you will too. This is not easy, it's not fun, it's very sad. Um, I hope you've all had your good cry. I'm working on mine. I've got about a million tears. Done about maybe 250,000 so far, as far as I can tell. <laughs> In case any of you need help with this, um, we can all counsel each other. A good place to cry, I found, is a bathtub. <laughs> So, I want you to know how deeply I respect that you walk this path at a time when it's not easy, and that you maintain your robes at a time when it's not easy. You have my love, respect, and I hold you above my head, every one of you, that you can still do this at this time. And I ask you please to nurture the younger members of our Sangha because they're not as seasoned as you. We need some help in nurturing them. Um, they're probably awfully confused. And so we have to become like all of us, mother ducklings, you know, keeping the little ducks in a row and making sure that, that everybody feels that, that they're on the right side and that they're loved and that and, and, and we need to share this perspective that this is, Dharma is being hit. It's not just us. So I'm hoping that each of you will join with me in making that, you know, obvious and in nurturing people to understand what we really have to understand now, which is that this is the time that was predicted. And so we have to watch our backs and watch our hearts and watch our minds. And that's the most important thing. Nam, nam.